Good evening, Fernwood. It is your nifty Nympho Neil, and there are nine noin nuf neck episodes left of Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. We are watching episode 317 from June 20th, 1977. Yesterday was quite explosive, so let's take a look. We started at the Fernwood Hallelujah Hour, hosted by Reverend Barry Field as Merle and Wanda confab with Angela and Buzz about their upcoming TV appearance. Wanda and Merle are excited to get on the campaign trail and are looking forward to making a splash on the show. The Reverend introduces Merle and Wanda who puff themselves up and then make sure to refer to Buzz and Angela. Berryfield then asks the clarifying question, which party are you running for? Merle's response is, I'm running for the Republican Party, of course, at which point Angela and Buzz both start to get nervous. And they feel the need to make the correction that they are not related to the Republican Party. The party that they were referring to is the Communist Party, the American Communist Party. And this sets Merle and Wanda off. The Reverend wants to restore order, but it looks like it's way too late for that. We return to the Capri Lounge, where the match we saw on Friday has not finished yet. No one has taken the fall, and the room is screaming in support of Mac. Charlie fields a phone call from Tom Hartman, who is looking for Mary. Of course, Charlie has no idea where she is. In between rounds, George tells Mac that he has to take Svetlana down or the Shumways will die. But Mac is still resistant because he loves Svetlana. George says he'll offer Kathy or Martha or whoever as long as he wins. And then the match begins and the crowd rages in bloodlust as Svetlana puts Mac in a submission hold. And at that point, Mac tells her that he loves her. And she says, all of the things that I've told you are lies because she goes from town to town giving people sob stories so they'll lose, but she loves him as well. And Mac looks over to George and Kathy and sees them starving. And he gets up and apologizes to Svetlana and takes her over his shoulders for an airplane and then takes her down for the pin. And as the room celebrates, Kathy collapses. Next, we head over to Merle's apartment where he, clearly he has run through a riot to get back in. And he checks to see if Wanda has arrived already, but she's not there. And he gets a knock, and it's her. Merle immediately puts the blame on Wanda for the problems in their marriage, which Wanda rebuffs. Then Adeline comes out and calls Merle a commie, and Mickey Moe has no idea what's going on. Eventually, Merle and Wanda get on the same page about how they are supportive to each other, and then the window breaks and someone has thrown a Lincoln head with a note attached. It's from the city council, and Merle is no longer the mayor. Mickey Moe and Adeline seem embarrassed to be involved with Merle and Wanda, and the Jeter couple look at each other because they have lost everything. Speaking of losing everything, Tom Hartman waited in his kitchen for Mary, but the knock at the door was Loretta and Charlie Haggers, who tell Tom that Mac won the match and George has plenty of money. Tom asks the Haggers if they have seen Mary at all because he discovered she was missing during the party. Loretta thinks that maybe she just went for a walk and spoils the movie love story because that explains why people go for a walk. Tom tells them that at the party he was having so much fun he didn't notice her disappear, but thinks that maybe yes she did just go for a walk to clear her mind, and then chooses to go on a walk for himself. And as he approaches the door he finds a note from Mary apologizing for leaving and he realizes that Mary has run away to Dennis, and that leaves everyone there in stunned silence. As I mentioned, yesterday was pretty explosive. I just have very little idea what to expect for these last nine episodes. There's only one thing to do.
Mary Hartman! Mary Hartman! <laughs> we are rich, we are rich! I told you that I was going to put this family on easy street, didn't I? Hey, hey. <laughs> oh, George, now don't forget. Oh, you have a lot of debts to pay off. Listen, I can pay all the debts and we'll still be rich. Just look at all that money, huh? Yeah, well, let's just see where we stand. Kathy, are you feeling all right? Because you look a little peaked, and I don't like the way you fainted. I'm fine, Mother. Really, I am. Now, come on. Um, let's see. Uh, you owe Tom $200 and Charlie 100 right? Chicken feed, chicken feed. You know something? I am going to make Mac the biggest wrestler in the world. You know, did you see him tonight milking that crowd? Came out like an old dish rag. <laughs> and then he mops up the ring with sweat, Lana. <laughs> Jeez, I like that guy. Yeah, he was terrific. Mm. You know something? I got big plans for him. Big plans. Bugs Massacre t-shirts, right? Sneakers. Rent a cars. Rent a truck, maybe. <laughs> Come on in! Come on in! Hey, you! Hey, hey, hey! Hello, there, champ! <laughs> Listen, I want to fill you in on your future. Now, let's hold on there a minute, George. Now, I got plans of my own now. Oh, that's wonderful. Yep. Wrestling's out. And sweat's in. <laughs> Svetlana Slattery. Sound good, no? Congratulations. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What about my plans? Well, listen, George, you're a genius at making money. I ain't worried about you. Listen, speaking of making money, I was wondering if maybe I could have my little share there, because me and my little honey, we got a plane to catch. Oh. <laughs> Mac, I think it's just wonderful the way you have recovered from the pain of losing me. <laughs> Listen, Mac, seems how you want your money so much. There it is. Thank you, George. Listen, y'all show me has meant a lot to me. Really. Oh. Goodbye, Mac. We'll all miss you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess I'll miss you, too. <laughs> uh, me, too. All right. It does be done, yeah. Bye. 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 Hey, listen, there's something I got to say to y'all. You guys got a lot of love in you. You just need to pull it together. Take care. Bye. 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 I don't believe this. I don't believe this. I, I, don't, I tell you, the world is against me. You know something? We're going to take all these winnings, and we're going to take a vacation. We're going to go on a cruise, one of the Great Lakes. Erie? Yeah, well, Ma you just might have to be a stowaway for that. What are you talking about? Well, checking my records. You see, now, after subtracting for the money that you've borrowed, and the utility bills, and what it's going to cost to get the car back, there is exactly... Uh-huh, $49.22. Oh, Kathy, that's impossible, for heaven's sakes. Martha, don't get carried away. I mean, Kathy made a mistake. Listen, we still got plenty of money. We got plenty of money, Martha. Uh, oh. oh, no, George. Oh, no, George. It's not the money. It's Kathy. Well, a bookkeeper she ain't, but... Doob! Doob! Oh! Oh! I'm having... I'm having those premonitions again. Oh! Stronger! Stronger than ever! Oh! Something terrible, something terrible is going to happen to Kathy soon. Ooh. Well, something terrible has happened. Her father just lost a fortune. No, no, George, be serious, be serious. I feel it, I feel it all over my body. Oh, he's coming closer. They're coming closer. Get out, get, get out. Just stop it, you're scaring me. Kathy, be careful. Oh, I knew. Oh, dear, I told you. Didn't I tell you? Didn't I tell you? Uh, She's out cold. Oh, oh, I knew it. I knew it. Oh. Tom. Oh, Tom, I... 
I just heard about Mary's leaving, and, well, I want you to know I feel just wretched about it. Hey, 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 look, it's my problem, not yours. Now, can oh. I get you some coffee? No, 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 thanks. What? Tom, I feel partly to blame about this. I mean, I had this uh, teeny talk with Mary before she, uh, well, what? jumped ship is, is the way I like Wanda, to put it. Wanda, you did not tell her about visiting me in jail, did you? Oh, Tom, what kind of woman do you think I am? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to insult you. Oh, I told her to have an affair with Dennis Foley. What? Oh, Tom, it, it was just a flippant remark, and I could just bite my tongue about it. Oh, God, I, look, I'll... Hey, 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 don't, don't do that. Don't bite oh, you. Don't, you're going to hurt sorry. yourself. Yeah. Listen, yeah. That's, it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Because I, it was basically my fault that oh, the marriage didn't work. Yes, it was. No, Tom, come on. I mean, marriage is like, uh, well, it's like baseball, you know. Uh, the more strikes you have, the more balls you need. And, well, it's, right. it's quite evident that uh, what you need now is an interim wife, a, a kind of substitute for Mary to just kind of help you over these rough spots in this transitional period. And... Well, it just so happens that I have the perfect person for the job. Uh, what? Lorraine. What? Now, Tom, relationships take time. I mean, yours and Mary's did. Of course, that was completely wrong right from the beginning, but this will be better. Uh, Lorraine, Lorraine, <laughs> meet Tom. Tom Hartman, Lorraine Babcock. Wanda. Uh, Tom, Lorraine is a home ec major. Nice kitchen. Listen, wait a minute. Oh, you have a microwave. You don't have a microwave. No, no, it's not uh, a microwave. I'm well, sorry. Of course, it's I'm not accustomed not. to the best, you know. Of course, there are a lot of things about the toaster oven that really are advantageous. Mm -hmm. It's much better than the micro oven in many ways, mm -hmm. you see, especially when it comes the to the area around me. Well, they I'll tell do you, have Wanda, a micro, Wanda. Uh, 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 excuse me, Lorraine, that, Lorraine, what, what did uh, Wanda tell you about, about... Well, she just told me that you needed... Help, and then I'd be perfect. And do you have a washer dryer? Tom, try to imagine her with a braids and a puff sleeve dress. She would look adorable. Hey, um, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to fix me up with this girl? Oh, what are you trying Tom, to do? Oh, come on. If I'd had anything sexual in mind, do you think I would have brought this child here? No, au contraire. I was just trying to find a replacement for Mary, you know. Companionship, oh, housework. Wanda, you know. Wanda, you know, is that what you think Mary was all about? No. Mary no. hated housework. She hated it. She only did it because she loved me. I mean, that's the only reason she did oh, it. Well, who cares why she did it? Tell me. The important thing is that doing? it gets done, right? What are you doing? Hold it. I mean, hold you it, can't. Hold it. Wait a minute. Hold it. Hold, hold it. Right there. Hold it. Now, hold it. Oh, well, look. I don't want anybody washing my dishes or doing my floor or cooking or cooking my food that doesn't love me. I don't want that. You see the stove right here? You see it right there? Now that is Mary's stove. See the wax on the floor? That's Mary's. I don't want anybody to touch anything in this kitchen but Mary. Now that's it. Hey, what's this? A new maid? Oh, what? Heather, uh, meet Lorraine. Uh, Lorraine's here on a kind of a, a mercy mission. <laughs> Thanks, but no thanks. We can get by alone if we have to. We don't take pity. And we certainly don't like mercy missions. Leave us alone. I love kids. Yeah, so do I. Uh, hey, I just remembered a really important hairdresser's appointment that I have, so why don't we just leave together? Okay? Uh, I, I do hair, too. Oh. A housewife first and a beautician second. Oh, I guess I'm just one of those kind of people who just like to help out. You know what I mean? There's nothing wrong in that. Oh, certainly <laughs> Absolutely isn't. not. The world is really point. great, you know. Yes, it really is wonderful, course, don't yes, you I think? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You look good, honey, in a Farrah Fawcett. Uh, Farrah Fawcett? Yeah, maybe an Imogen oh, Coca who's yeah, kind of cropped close to my, I don't know. What? Oh, please, please, please let me be wrong. Just this once. Martha, will you please knock it off? Now, Kathy's going to be fine. Uh, then, George, George, why do I feel so strange? You are strange. <laughs> What's up, Doc? I I is it a concussion? Oh, fine, fine. <laughs> Kathy, would you mind just stepping into the other room for a minute? Uh, yes, I would mind. If you're going to talk about my body, I want to hear about it. Doctor's orders. The concussion is fine, but the kidneys, push. The kidneys? Now, doctor, doctor, are you sure Kathy is not pregnant? Because she is prone to that. No, no, no. If you'll just take a look at this x-ray, you'll see what I mean. This is even worse than I thought. Uh, oh, 
I had it upside down. No wonder it looked even extra serious. See, you'll see now the, uh, the acute nephroses with the associated hypertensions. Hey, 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 English, 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 please. Bad kidneys. Is that serious? Well, yes and no. Well, what do you mean, yes or no? It's not serious if you can afford uh, $26,000 for a dialysis machine. Oh, my God, I can't afford $26,000? Then it's very serious. Uh, now, wait, one second here. Uh, I don't know what you guys are talking about, but uh, the only thing wrong with me is a bump on the head. That's it. Yeah, yeah, we got no bad kidneys in this family. Well, Grandpa, maybe, but that don't count. Daddy. What can I say? What can you say? <laughs> I'll tell you what you can say, Furman. You can say that you goofed. You goofed, Sawbones, you goofed. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with me except a headache. Ah. <laughs> uh, ooh. Ooh. Look, um, there's also, of course, the possibility of finding a kidney donor. Oh, an operation? Huh. Oh, no, no, no. What we're going to do is we're going to find a doctor who knows how to treat a simple concussion. That's what we're going to do. Yeah. You'll yeah. feel pretty silly when she dies. George, will you listen to him? See, I think we should be, now all of us, on the lookout for a suitable donor. Possibly a brother, a sister. Oh, a sister? A sister? Well, the closest we come to that is Mary. Now, wait a minute. This is ridiculous. I don't want an operation. I don't want any machines. I'm with you, Princess. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Dr. Furman is right. Oh, yes. I, I say and said. What do you know? Yes, what do you know? I don't know. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Mary? 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 Hey, what, what the hell is going on? Do you, do you people know what time it is? Well, I think it's about 2 o'clock. George, you have your watch on. Oh, stop it, Martha. He doesn't care what time it is. Well, then why do you... I don't know what the hell is going oh, on. Oh, excuse yeah. me. Yeah. Excuse me. Excuse me, Tom, would you sit down? We've got something very serious to talk to you about. What? 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 It's not Mary. Is something happened to Mary? Is that it? Oh, what? Tom, how did you know? What? Is it Mary? Did something happen? Yeah. What's going on? Don't, don't say anything. Not in front of Heather. No. You don't understand, Tom. We just want to talk to Mary. Heather, Heather, go upstairs and get your mother, please. I can't. She's gone. Where? She didn't say, but I think she ran away with Dennis Foley. Oh, no! Oh, yeah, I know. She's getting, like, having Foley around. Oh, I'm gonna... No, we okay. haven't got time for that, Martha. Listen, Tom, is this true? Oh, you mean Mary ran off with Dennis Foley? Uh, good for her. I, I, I mean, bad for you. We need Mary. Uh, yeah, well, what, you, you need her, huh? Well, what about me? Huh? What about me? What about Heather? Um, yeah, what about me? Well, did she say where she was going? She didn't even say she was going. Oh, boy. The one time she could have been useful, she's disappeared. Thanks, Mary. What are you talking about? Tom, listen. What? Kathy needs a kidney transplant. The logical donor would be your wife. If we don't find a suitable donor very soon... What? Well, listen, listen. What Dr. Ehrman is saying here now is the fact that he thinks that Mary can save Kathy's life. Oh God, Kathy, I'm so sorry. I didn't know. I didn't know. So, you see, we've got to get her back, Tom. See, Mary's kidney would be ideal. I mean, but with all these blood relatives around, I'll bet you uh, my stethoscope, I'll find somebody who'll have an acceptable kidney. I'll run some tests. Hey, wait a minute. I've got their blood types. Very good. She's prepared for emergencies. That's a very good policy. Okay. Yeah. Very now, good. see, last month in, in biology, I, I, I ran a test. Look, see, there's uh, all their all good. blood types. Very good. All right, now let's look at this. Hmm. Kathy's is AB. Mm -hmm. Kathy's is AB. Kathy's is AB. Okay, a. now, AB. Martha's is B. I'm B. B. George is A. 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 Uh, Kathy's is AB. Right. Uh, that lets you two out. Uh, oh. Oh. Mr. Larkins is A.B. Grandpa? No, well, Kathy can have any one of my kidneys she wants, but I don't see what good they do her. They sure work lousy for me. No, that's hardly a recommendation. Uh, but Kathy's grandpa isn't related to her in any way. Oh. Well, that's, that's very interesting. Uh, well, is there anything else I can do? Yeah, you can keep quiet so we can get on with this. Well, you know, we could, we could use a stranger as a donor. It's not as good as a blood relative, but a kidney's a kidney. Hey. Hey, hey, you missed one. Look, look. Daddy's is A.B. Oh, uh, well, 
No, that's hey, well, that does it. That does it. Well, okay. When do we? I want to do it. When well, do, when well, do we, we do we, the transplant? We we, we can we can uh, we can hold off for a while. But I'm we, ready. I'm ready right now. Uh, Tom, how can I put this? Uh, I think we should look a little further. I mean, if we're going to go with a stranger as a donor, I think we can look for a stranger whose kidneys aren't uh, saturated in alcohol. I'm sorry. But I hear you're on the wagon. Does anybody know where we can find Mary? Hey, God, are you up there? Because if you could just spare a little time and help find Mary, I'd be indebted to you for the rest of my life. I'd even give you 10% of my commission on the next million dollars I make. Oh, Maybe a lesser authority could handle this job. Who? I'd still give him 10%. No, no. Five, I would. I... How about H.V. Johnson? Who's H.V. Johnson? The police detective I almost married a few months ago. What? Well, George, that was when you went away with those religious people, you know? And I thought you were going to be gone forever. Whoa, 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 here now. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I want to know exactly what went on between you and H.V. Johnson. Oh, why don't you settle this later? We've got something more important to take care of right now. I'll call H.V. Johnson. I don't believe this woman. She's out of my sight for two seconds and they start popping out of the woodwork. Hello? Oh, uh, perhaps you could tell me whether or not... H.V. Johnson is on duty tonight. He is? Well, may I speak to him, please? He's there. It's all settled. He's there. Hello, H.V.? Uh, guess who this is? Oh. <laughs> oh, stop it. Stop it. You are as big a devil as ever. Stop it, H.V. No, no, H.V., I am very, very serious. Now, listen carefully. This is a matter of life and death. I thought it might be you. But you brought your gun just in case. Well, you never know. There might be a thief around. Daddy, who's going to break in, rob the place, and then sit down and watch TV? Yeah, I guess you're right. He'd probably take the TV and put it in his sack. <laughs> I'm glad you're going to be with us for a couple of days, Kathy. Yeah, thanks for letting me stay, Daddy. Uh, Kathy, I didn't know that you were a fan of Randolph Scott. Who's Randolph Scott? The cowboy you're watching on television. Okay. Kathy, look at me. No, I can't. I'm gonna cry. Come here. Come on. Come on. Hurry up. Oops, the basil. Oh, Daddy. Hey, hey, hey. I ain't gonna let anything bad happen to you. Yeah, but I'm scared. Ah. You're not gonna let that doom business get to you, are you? No. You know how your mom is. She likes to scream and cry and say something crazy before she faints. Yeah, Daddy, but this isn't crazy. All of her predictions, just like she said, is coming true. <sighs> Look, she's been in the prediction business for a month. Mm -hmm. Now, I've been in the protection business all my life. And that means protecting you. Now, don't tell me we're not going to get out of this thing. We're going to lick this thing. We're in it together, and we're going to get out together, because I'm in the protection business. <laughs> Thanks, Daddy. <laughs> no, I know, I know. We lost a baby or two and a boyfriend here or there. Strangulation, 
whatever. But whenever it was a heavy issue, I never let you down. I love you, Daddy. I love you too, Princess. Well, what do you say we find out what old Randolph Scott is up to? Hmm? <laughs> That was surprisingly sweet. And it's a Shumway focused episode. It starts on Kathy, George, and Martha counting up the winnings from the wrestling match. And George thinks that's easy street from here on out. Of course, he owes people money. He's got bills to pay. They've definitely got to reset their life. Matt comes in with Svetlana, and apparently that's the end of the wrestling business for him, I'm not sure why they couldn't be married and wrestle because there are wrestlers who are married to each other, but apparently it's off to start a life and that probably means that's the last we will see of Mac and Svetlana, of course. Kathy does the number crunching and all they'll have left after things are said and done, paying off their bills and getting reset is about 50 bucks, which isn't rich. For sure. It, it's enough to go for a little while in the mid-70s, but it's definitely not a lot of money. And then Martha has her premonition, which she's been having for a while, right? She's been having a premonition that someone in their family was doomed. Kathy has been having her side pains for about a week. Martha's premonition gets violent, right? She starts, like, spasming or whatever, and Kathy comes over and gets knocked out. Course, that's a good reason to go to a doctor. Then Tom is at home doing laundry, which I th think this is the first time I've seen him do anything domestic. He's made a meal for Mary, I think, like when he was trying to impress her, you know, not like basic chores or anything like that. And Wanda shows up with a replacement for Mary in terms of the housework, at least. I forgot her name, but she doesn't seem like she's going to be sticking around more than an episode. She comes over and she is obsessed with cleaning. Tom is still holding on to Mary. The only person that he wants to be cleaning that house is Mary. And he says that Mary hated cleaning and the only reason that she did it was because she loved him. Which, take that back to episode one, you can see in that episode that she sort of has a blank stare as she looks at that floor obsessing over waxy yellow buildup. And to put that fuel behind it, right, that specifically she did that for over a year in our witness, right, but like 16 years of their relationship was her cleaning the house and Tom says that she only justified it because she loved him. I suppose we'd want to hear her perspective on it, though we know that Mary likes to hide her actual feelings about things. I mean, but that is something that provokes a thought in me. You know, did she do all of that simply because she was supporting the relationship? In any case, Wanda and the young lady leave to go get some hairdos, and Tom is skeptical. Then we're at the hospital where the Shumways meet up with Dr. Furman, who we haven't seen in a little bit. Dr. Furman says that Kathy's head is fine, but puts a name on these mysterious side pains that she has been having, and says that she needs a new kidney. And of course, George's reaction is to say, you're crazy, which I, you know, I don't know medically why George feels like he can just deny that, but perhaps that sense of denial is something that happens when you get a diagnosis sometimes. Martha's premonitions, though, put her on the side of believing Dr. Furman. And then the next scene takes them again to Tom in the middle of the night because Kathy needs a transplant. That's her only chance. They don't have the money for dialysis, so getting a kidney transplant is the idea, and they don't know that Mary has left. I mean, it's pretty new, I think, for everyone. It feels like it just happened last night. 
so it's very, very new. Heather comes out and confirms that Mary has left. I think Tom was hesitant to tell them what happened. She also has some of the blood types collected. I don't know exactly why. It's school project, I guess. But she has blood types written down so Dr. Furman can go through and say who might be eligible that's amusing to me because in a few hours I will be giving my bi-monthly blood donation and uh, there you go. I, it, it's unrelated to anything interesting to you. I'm just giving blood in a few hours, which I have been doing a lot since COVID started and uh, I just feel the need to donate. However, most of the family members are ineligible for transplant to Kathy. Grandpa Larkin might have the type, but, you know, he doesn't feel too safe about his kidneys. Tom has the right blood type, but his alcoholism is a factor, and maybe let's look for someone else. And then Martha gets the idea of calling HV, right? Detective Johnson, who she had a pretty long-term romance with as... George disappeared at the start of season two. He was there right up until George was reintroduced into the series and hasn't been seen since. So I feel like this last two weeks, we may be revisiting some of the characters and storylines over the couple of years that we've been with this show. I don't know. We don't hear HV's response to this call I don't know if we'll see him. We don't know if he has the right blood type. But we end with a tender scene between George and Kathy. And this is the second time that George has been tender in the last couple of weeks. Usually he's just cranky. But with Mary last week, he was supportive and mature. And with Kathy, he was sweet and fatherly Kathy is of course scared I don't know we've got a few weeks I don't know if we're going to end with another emotional heartbreaking run I don't know I don't want to see Kathy go I think she's got a lot going for her you know I think she's got some ideas She's got the beginning of a direction. We'll see. So this week I am reviewing the entirety of Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman in bullet point form, informed by my own folder of YouTube thumbnails. So I don't necessarily get all the details, but you know, I hate to share everything because you should just be watching. We're starting at episode 61 right now, which begins with Tom and Mary coming back together a bit. The Haggers guest Muriel is Charlie's ex, who seems to be scarred with burns that are apparently Charlie's fault. As Mary is trying to get more and more connected to Tom, she's doing her best to divert Dennis's attentions by introducing him to Roberta Wallachek, who was previously dating Grandpa Larkin. Throughout this time, though, Dennis is pretty clearly focused on Mary. He's dating these other women mainly because it seems to make Mary feel better. We meet the new neighbors, the McCulloughs, who we talked about a little bit last week. And as I mentioned then, they become friends with Mary and Tom. Loretta's star begins to rise. She is the guest on a talk show, but Muriel continues to scheme against the Haggers. She really wants revenge against Charlie. The McCulloughs get closer and closer to the Hartmans, and that even leads to Mother Betty McCullough trying to set Howard up with Mary, even though it's clear that Mary's married. Things get more and more depressing for Tom at the factory. He is tired of working there. Dennis takes up a relationship with Kathy at the same time as Roberta, which relieves some of the pressure that Mary receives, but not all of it, because Dennis is still intent on the love he has for Mary and the love that he believes that Mary feels for him. Loretta and Charlie then get involved with Jimmy Joe Jeter, who is a very young preacher, and his father Merle, 
who has designs on Loretta. And after Kathy leaves Dennis, she gets together with Cleet Meisenheimer, who introduces her to Father DeMarco. And there's a bit of a triangle that happens there, too. Tom does his best to get counsel for the relationship with Mary, which he wants to improve, but that goes very badly. And the various situations escalate until Tom finds out what happened between Dennis and Mary. So everybody, I expect that the next couple of weeks are going to be pretty crazy. The last two days have had lots of big bangs happening. So thank you so much for watching with me. Thank you so much for leaving your thoughts, feelings, and impressions down in the comments. Thank you for sticking around for these last nine noin nuf neck episodes. And we will see you tomorrow night in Fernwood.